are so preconditioned um, from society and our education that we believe that a fixed paid salary job might give us some karma sleep at nights or we can choose to break out of the system and the comfort zones and ride some roller coasters and add a little bit more color to our lives and the ones of others. I don't believe there's a right or wrong in either decision you make because whatever path you take, I believe you come to a point where you will ask yourself, what if I've done it the other way? There's always multiple ways how to achieve an aim. Like in my profession as a makeup artist, there isn't a fixed routine that you need to follow to achieve a smoky eye for an example. There's many ways how you can do that. And you can figure out which one is the one that suits you best. And the same concept can be also applied for other goals in life. I believe you don't need to walk other people's steps to achieve something just because it worked for them. It doesn't mean that it's the only way or that it is your way. I can surely say that um, the steps that I chose in my life made me see the world from upside down from where I appreciated beauty in each and every chapter and human being that had crossed my ways. And my life wouldn't have as many colorful stories to tell. And I would have surely not stand here if I would have walked other people's steps or allowed their fears to influence mine. Um, I'm going to present you guys some five, six steps, like guidelines, basically, of my of Mariana's upside down um, <laughs> living. <laughs> Number one is ask yourself the right questions. So pretty much 10 years ago, I was living in Germany. I had just received my master degree in textile engineering and I made the decision not to take the secure paid salary road. Because since my early years, I was loving creative things, be it painting on canvases, on clothes, people or walls. <laughs> um, my mind was full of beautiful things and my hands were thirsty to make it visible and um, back then I was doing a little bit of hair and makeup on the side as a passion and I was pretty good at it and I could figure out and imagine that I would love to have this as my profession. I believe that all of us have some kind of a talent or power inside of us and we need to listen to that silent sound and turn up the volume and understand that that silent sound is our passion speaking to us. So I had found mine, and uh, now I needed to know how to make this my profession. Now, when you ask others how to become a professional makeup artist, they will tell you the usual pathways that you need to go to a makeup school, or you need to assist a big makeup artist, or maybe even both. Um, and this is the moment where you have to ask yourself, should I follow other people's steps or is there maybe a way that would suit me more? So at that time, all I wanted to do was go out there and see the world and I wanted to become a makeup artist. So I thought, why not combine these two aspects? So my hunger to see the world and my education towards my profession became one. To whichever destination I was traveling to, I was not losing my focus on my goal and I was making sure I do something that would add to my makeup career. And this is the second point I want you to remember. Whatever you do, don't lose your focus on your goal. I give you an example. Like I knew I needed to build a portfolio. So 2010, when a friend of mine invited me for her wedding to Cape Town, while I was there and enjoying the country, I went on a mission and contacted photographers and agencies and models and I was organizing my own shoots. And the same when I traveled to New York or London or ended up in Dubai. Basically wherever I was going I was making sure, use of the fact that I'm in a new place and I was connecting with the professionals from that area, gaining experience and getting into my dream profession one step at a time. And traveling was the best teacher because it made me observant to my environment and collaborate with so many internationals that I wouldn't have the chance if I would stay in one, one spot. And the best part was that I was really enjoying the journey that I picked. <laughs> and um, 
this is this third point of my guideline I wanted to know is that whatever you do, you have to enjoy the journey with all its aspects, even if it gets unpleasant. And again, there other people will tell you if you start something new, you have to struggle through a beginning phase and only if you achieve a certain success level, only then um, you, have, you will start to enjoy. So I don't believe in that. I believe that you need to feel gratitude for your chosen path from the beginning because obviously if you struggle, it's just a matter of time that you're going to drop it because you not stay motivated. And of course you, you're going to hit some stepping stones and nobody said it's going to be easy. But um, first of all, there's no rush. And second, like the, every step that you do is somehow moving you, even the smallest steps. It's either going to move you forward or sometimes even if it's going to feel like you just did some back steps, those back steps are actually very necessary because those are the ones that make you do it better the next time. And all of it together makes you more experienced than before. And the ones that make you struggle actually will put you in front of the question, do I really want this in my life? But as long as you can answer this question with yes, then all you need to do is keep going and appreciating your achievements along the way because all of them count. And um, have you ever actually seen a lobster, how it becomes a lobster? <laughs> it has to change its shell so many times as a sign of growth. So all these steps you do are your education towards your growth. And um, then we move on to the next point, which is very important for me and very dear to me as well is visualization. I um, strongly believe that this is the base of it. Um, you need to be able to see yourself already at the top line. Um, I give you a little story um, from that. Initially six years ago when I had uh, just come to India, I was invited as a guest um, for the Vogue Beauty Awards and I saw somebody else walking up that stage and receiving the award for best makeup of the industry. And that was the moment where I draw that picture in my mind that one day I'm going to be the one walking up that stage and receiving that award. And uh, finally, uh, last year, that moment came and wow. there is a picture of it when I'm holding that award. <laughs> and yes, it took me six years for that. And I was 100% sure that I would have achieved this way before. But um, time actually doesn't matter. What matters is that when I look back now, I recognize that I could allow the fact that I wasn't achieving things in an expected time to stop me from believing in myself. Or I could choose to see the entire process as an adventure and me going out there and exploring it. And about adventures, there's another thing that I want to tell you. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of the music and art festival Burning Man. It is um, a big part. Whoever knows me a little bit knows that it's a little big, big part of my life. It's not a music festival for me. It is like the sacred place that I'm pilgriming to almost every year. And um, where 70,000 people from all around the world gather together in the desert of Nevada and literally show you what it means to turn the world upside down. Because nothing as we know from this world exists there. There is no money, there is no politics, no religion, none of these things that usually separates us from in this world. And you can choose who you want to be every single day with unlimited creativity and unlimited love. Here are some pictures of my last Burning Man experience to give you guys a little glimpse of this magical place. <laughs> and, um, and there we go. And um, why I'm mentioning it here is because one of the biggest lessons that I learned there was to take chances and don't push opportunities for the next time. Because Burning Man, there, it's a place where Adventures happen any moment and you have to decide in that moment, for example, if you want to hop on that art car that wants to give you a ride where you have absolutely no idea where you're going to end up and if you're going to find home from there. Or if you should follow this group of people that you just met and 
follow them to the next camp and you have no idea what's going to expect you there. And you can't say maybe later or I call you guys and I meet you there because there are no phones and most you don't have no idea if you're ever going to see these people ever again and the 70,000 people of mess and most likely there's not going to be a next time for that art car so it's either in that moment and you hop on that adventure or you're going to miss the chance and I strongly believe in destiny I believe that when opportunities come into your life, they don't appear coincidentally. There's either something that you need to learn out of them, or they come exactly in that moment of time in your life because they need to take you to the next step you need to get to. So when life presents a door in front of me, I take that risk and I open it. And um, of course, not behind all these doors is only magic and all these rides are amazing. But if I would have not uh, take that chance, I would have never ended up at all these amazing places that I was. And 10 years ago, if somebody would have told me one day you're going to be a successful makeup artist in such a foreign country like India, I would have never believed it. But when that door appeared in front of me, I, was, I trusted my gut feeling and I was curious enough what's behind it, and that's why I am standing here right now. And um, there's one more last story that I want to tell you, which, um, for example, like 2013, I had just uh, came to in, uh, Dubai, and I was actually successfully um, settling there, and things were happening for me. I was getting to the market, and I was really enjoying my time there, and um, I just moved into my apartment, and then I got the opportunity to come to India. And everybody was telling me, but why now? You just got here and it's really working out for you. So I don't think it's a good timing. So although it seemed not a good timing for everybody else around me, there I said, the opportunity appeared in front of me and I was too curious to just let that chance miss. So I said to myself, you know, why not? I can explore it for two, three months. And if I don't like it, I can always come back to Dubai. And this is the last point that, uh, of my guideline. If it calms your fear, then you can remind yourself that you can always come back to where you are now. Because you already reached to this, to this spot, so if for whatever reason you don't like that new thing or that new place that you want to explore, you can always come back to this place where you are now. So I didn't hear again to other people's fears and uh, I took that chance and I came to India and out of my two, three months became six and a half years and I, uh, it completely changed my entire life and I manifested some of my biggest dreams and much, much more and I became this uh, respected makeup artist working with the biggest names of the industry like uh, Sabia Saji, like she mentioned, and Ashparia Ray, and all these people behind me. It's like some pictures of my work, Estee Lauder, and leading the hair and makeup department of Lakme Fashion Week, which I'm going to do next week again. <laughs> and so on and on. And um, it's not over yet. And I will keep paying attention at these doors that appear in front of me, and I will keep open them and see where they're going to lead me next. So my message today is go out there and walk your own path instead of following other people's steps. Enjoy the journey, but don't lose your focus. And dare to do the things your way, because your way might seem upside down from somebody else's perspective, but it's exactly the right one from yours. <laughs>